All right, here we go again on remote ID uh, for drones. And I'm doing this because some people are getting equipment in hand and I wanna make the process of getting remote ID from drones easier and uh, at least the Bluetooth type. So in the picture here is just a, a war dragon that I put together. Uh, you don't have to use the war dragon. I'm just trying to make it easy and include everything that is needed. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to show a uh, Dragon OS, uh, the latest Dragon OS build here, and how to get up and running. The same applies for the War Dragon, although some of the uh, packages are already installed and available, as well as the uh, dongle. You can't really see it. It's up underneath the GPS here, attached to this antenna. Uh, is already preloaded with firmware. And some people were getting those dongles from me as well. So mainly doing this video for two purposes, just to show how I've made it a little bit further, just through a combination of open source, really not a lot of development uh, that was kind of handled, <coughs> excuse me, by the uh, Sniffle developer. I just tried to help uh, steer the direction of where things were going, at least in terms of getting remote ID working with Sniffle. So anyways, what is Remote ID? I've talked about it before. You can see uh, basically the FAA is uh, put out information here as far as what is Remote ID. Uh, it, I think it's called something a little different in Europe, but uh, you can see the weight uh, at which point you need to start adding Remote ID. I'm, I'm pretty certain the DJI Mini 2 that uh, I have is um, even falls within the, the weight class. I, I'm pretty certain. Don't hold me to that. But I went ahead and bought a uh, remote ID transmitter external that I can add. And that is what I'm using to test and verify the decoding of at least Bluetooth 5 long range extended is working. So this uh, Holy Stone transmitter is uh, what I'm kind of basing the, uh, the results off of right now. And so you can read a little bit more about Remote ID. Uh, I encourage you to do so, especially if you're flying drones. And then we're just going to jump right into this. So I've got it down to where I, I don't have to open Wireshark. Well, I'm still using T-Sharks, but basically we can do this command line. And then from there, we can convert the output into JSON. And then uh, we can eventually pipe it into something. Uh, I've got some ideas on there, but just want to show how we can make this a little bit easier. So if you come to the Sniffle page uh, and, and say you did pick up a dongle on your own, it's got to be the right one, the right Sonoff uh, dongle, and it talks about it on this page here. I think it even gives a link to the dongle. Uh, but if you didn't want to compile the firmware yourself, it's up under uh, version releases. You can pull down the correct firmware for your dongle and you can flash it. I try to like again pre-configure and take care of all that. So I'm just going to focus on uh, if you had to grab the code to make this happen uh, and, and actually I need to remind myself I just have these pages pulled up but I'm going to have to jump over and use Rust Desk on the uh, other platform that is a uh, brand new install of Dragon OS. I'm j I've already uh, SCP the files over there because uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have internet at, at the moment and uh, so I'll just highlight the pages here you're gonna need the, the sniffle code and I put together a fork based on the sniffles fork of the original Wireshark Dissector just so I could uh, make some notes down below as to and reminding myself uh, actually sorry I, I made another branch just called headless and uh, I'll use some of these steps here, refer to some of these steps that I just quickly threw together here just to remind myself until I build out an even easier method of doing this. And who knows, maybe at some point uh, Sniffle itself will just include uh, decoding of remote ID. You can see that uh, under the Python CLI Sniffle uh, advanced data that some decoding has already been added for Bluetooth, both Apple and Microsoft. So you can also use the dongle for you know those purposes of uh, getting Bluetooth information off of Apple and Microsoft. Again, I'm just going to focus on remote ID. So basically, you need Sniffle and these uh, Wireshark Dissector, specifically this uh, particular file right here. 
Okay, and what else? Uh, yeah, I think that's enough there. I'm going to jump over to the remote system. I already have the uh, dongle flashed with Sniffle, and I've shown that in the past, so I'm not going to really uh, spend time on that. Uh, what we're going to want to do is um, we have the two directories here that we need and let me just actually jump back here for a second just to point out the steps uh, we're going to open two terminals we're going to um, make a um, first in first out this uh, file that uh, it talks about there I'm just going to throw it in the temp directory and that is where we're going to send sniffle information to and then simultaneously we'll have T shark open which is going to read that and um, and turn it into JSON so there you go and then you can see I put a little note about how we can pipe it out to netcat to a uh, remote host and a, and a port once we uh, or once I get around to figuring out what I'm gonna send it into so uh, let's see so anyway so we do our MK uh, FIFO temp name it whatever you want to name it just remember what you do name it and so in this window we're going to start the sniff receiver and we'll do dash L for long range E for extended we'll do let's see dash O and we're going to go in that temp PCAP file and so that's going to start uh, the sniffle um, actually uh, let's see oh I guess it would help uh, I actually stole the hub to do a keyboard and mouse on this computer so give me a second should now be plugged in and so the receivers plugged in you're seeing you know basically nothing because I don't have the transmitter on right now and uh, I'm not going to run it for that long because I don't want any uh, lat and long coming up uh, but believe me it will and let's see so we'll open up another window and let me think here so downloads Wireshark dissector and then from within this directory we'll do T-Shark we'll point it uh, to read from the PCAP file and we're gonna have it load the uh, open shark or uh, what is it uh, open drone ID file there and then we're gonna do dash T for JSON and we should be set up now again we could pipe this out to somewhere but if I turn the uh, Holy Stone transmitter on we're gonna see that uh, it's pretty much immediately gonna start decoding this and so it's decoding it and I'm gonna stop it right there I'll let it clear up here a second uh, because I, I am doing remote desktop here and we can see that so we're getting it in JSON uh, format here we can see the B uh, the Bluetooth packet information so we see the Bluetooth packet information uh, and there's some pretty um, good information in there uh, I think there's somewhere there there's the RISI DBM uh, some other information about the Bluetooth but if we come down and start to see now it's gonna break out the um, I know it says open drone ID but remote ID and I'll just point out so my understanding of these transmitters is uh, at least the one that I have 
uh, you had to pair to it and set it up and you got to enter obviously appropriate information in there I just put just some information for right now just to make sure I was decoding everything and yeah and it's not uh, in this message because I did not leave it run long enough but once it acquires GPS then it's gonna have all that information in there as well lat long altitude whole bunch of other information and what I want to do from there is um, pipe that information out probably been thinking of several different things I'm sure it'll get to the point where uh, Kismet could just take it in uh, cesium uh, mapping engine uh, you know maybe uh, who knows maybe an app uh, on a phone and yeah and basically just have fun with it I mean I I find it pretty interesting uh, in a lot of my videos you'll probably notice I love to just really find multiple things out there on the internet and bring it together in such a way that it kind of produces the result that I want so I don't have to spend a lot of time coding things from scratch or whatever and then just share it with other people and uh, and then try and make it easy with just having it all set up in Dragon OS and I'll probably include these repositories in the Dragon OS ISO but in the War Dragon I'm trying to pre-configure everything so you literally just turn it on and you can be decoding remote ID and actually have it mapping it to something maybe eventually alright I hope that uh, I hope that helps uh, get up and going with this